Today, I'll be finishing up our series on refining by discussing the various types of units within a refinery beyond distillation. Let's get started. There are many different types of refinery configurations. Complexities and technologies differ between each one, but there are several basic configurations that are useful to understand. A refinery setup is largely based on the type of crude oil that the refinery runs. The simplest configuration is what we call the hydroskimming refinery. You may hear this referred to as a topping plant or a topping refinery. It has atmospheric and vacuum distillation towers to separate crude oil into fractions based on their boiling points. In addition, there's a reformer that upgrades naphtha from a low octane component to a higher octane gasoline blend stock. This blend stock is known as reformant and is one of the key components that allows gasoline to meet on-road octane specifications. There's also a hydrotreater that removes sulfur from diesel and kerosene to meet on-road diesel requirements. Hydroskimming refineries don't have the ability to upgrade the bottom of the barrel, so they produce a lot of gas oil and heavy fuel that's either sold or further upgraded at another refinery. Margins in a hydroskimming refinery tend to be lower, and this type of refining capacity is often referred to as the swing capacity in our industry. Another type of refinery configuration is the medium conversion or catalytic cracking refinery. This configuration is similar to the hydroskimming refinery, but has a fluid catalytic cracking unit. You may have heard this unit referred to as an FCC or a cat cracker. The FCC allows the refinery to take some of the crude fractions that are heavier than diesel and convert those streams to higher value products, primarily gasoline and diesel. These heavier crude fractions contain longer chain and more complex molecules. The FCC selectively cracks these longer chain hydrocarbons into simpler and shorter molecules that are in the gasoline and diesel boiling range. Downstream of the FCC is what we call an alkylation unit, also known as the alky. The alky unit takes a light product off the FCC and combines it with another molecule, which converts it into a very high octane gasoline blend component. This blend component is called alkylate. Medium conversion refineries generally run light sweet to medium sour crudes, and having an FCC greatly increases your gasoline and diesel yield. On the left is a picture of an FCC unit. The tall structure in the middle is the reactor, and the shorter vessel on the right-hand side is called a regenerator. So in an FCC unit, feeds such as gas oils are heated and mixed with catalyst and are introduced into a reactor where long-chain molecules are selectively cracked into shorter molecules and then sent to a fractionator with most of the products being recovered in the gasoline and diesel boiling ranges. Essentially, off the reactor, you have spent catalysts that, after the reaction, are coated in a petroleum coke layer, and that catalyst has to be regenerated before being mixed and reintroduced with the SEC feed again. The last refinery configuration that we'll cover is called a high conversion or coking refinery. This configuration is similar to the medium conversion refinery, but with an added hydrogen plant, a hydrocracker, and a unit called a coker. With these additional units, a coking refinery typically processes medium and heavy sour crudes. There's an economic driver to utilize this type of refinery configuration due to its ability to convert discounted medium and heavy sour crudes while still maximizing high value light product yields. This configuration typically generates the highest margins, but it also requires a high capital investment. Hydrocracking is another catalytic process that converts heavy hydrocarbons into light products. Some hydrocrackers take streams that are heavier than diesel, crack it in a hydrogen-rich environment, and turn it into a high-quality diesel product. Since hydrocrackers require a significant amount of hydrogen, these refineries tend to have their own hydrogen plant or have commercial agreements in place to import purchased hydrogen. Hydrocrackers and FCCs serve a similar purpose in the refinery, and that's to upgrade heavier, lower-value products into lighter, higher-value products. SECs tend to produce a lot more gasoline and hydrocrackers produce more diesel, and this is typically the decision factor when determining which of the two a refinery will utilize, although some refineries actually have both technologies. For both hydrocrackers and FCCs, you get what is called liquid volume gain through the unit, which means that when you send 100 barrels of feedstock to an FCC or hydrocracker, you get somewhere between 110 to 120 barrels of liquid product. So why do we get volume gain? Well, when you take the longer chain hydrocarbon and crack it down to smaller molecules, the smaller molecules will tend to take up more space or volume than one longer chain molecule. When you add hydrogen to the mix, like in a hydrocracker, those smaller molecules take up even more space. Volume gain can be a big economic driver that provides the incentive to invest in this type of conversion capacity, which is why some refiners are willing to spend the capital. 
So we've covered a lot of different conversion units, and the last conversion unit we'll talk about is the delayed coker. A coker converts very heavy bottom-of-the-barrel feedstocks into lighter products in petroleum coke utilizing a process called thermal cracking. The lighter products that come off a coker are used as a feedstock to other refinery units to produce transportation fuels, and the remaining petroleum coke, or simply coke, is a solid product and is sold. In the coking process, heavy oil is heated to around 900 to 930 degrees Fahrenheit and is then sent to vessels called coke drums. The coke drum is where the thermal cracking process takes place. In summary, cokers are also similar to cat crackers and hydrocrackers because they crack long hydrocarbon chains into shorter, lighter hydrocarbons. But the coking process is not nearly as selective as hydrocracking or cat cracking because it produces solid petroleum coke. This results in the liquid volume yield per barrel being much lower than what we see for the hydrocracker or FCC. But keep in mind that the coker feed is significantly lower in value than FCC or hydrocracker feeds. Having a coker allows you to process discounted, heavy sour crudes, crudes that a simple, low conversion refinery can't handle. As you can see, there's a lot of engineering that goes into refining crude oil into the valuable products we use today. We hope that this series has been useful in understanding the basics of petroleum refining, and thank you for tuning in to Energy Matters.